Welcome back uh, to the discussion of spatial computing. Uh, with this video, we start a new module on spatial networks. So at the end of the first video, uh, we have two objectives. All of us should be able to describe the societal uh, importance of spatial networks, why we are studying this, who can benefit, and so on. And uh, in addition, we also want to discuss the limitations of spatial querying that we discussed earlier in context of spatial networks and their applications. Okay. So let's first look at spatial networks, you know, where they come from. Uh, a very classical use case is navigation. So navigation pertains to finding routes to a particular destination. And uh, navigation is really, um, you know, as old as humans, right? So, you know, when uh, humans they had not settled down for agriculture and so on, they still had to go find food and water and other things, and they had to probably remember routes, very much like how elephants and other migratory um, species do that today. Okay. Uh, once humans settled, then you will still see thing, notions like uh, treasure hunt, right? Even Columbus, you know, when he came to West Indies or what we call America today, was looking for trade routes to uh, to get spices from India. Right? So again, knowing the routes were very, very important for different kind of trades. And there were well-known routes like silk route over land and people were finding routes over ocean. Another important group which deals with navigation a lot is, uh, you can say, defense or armed forces. Right? So they again need to have many different kinds of routes. So if they have a particular target, they need to find a stealth route to reach there without getting detected by the adversary. And uh, even if they are not looking for target, if, if just, you know, if the units are placed somewhere, they need to get food and supplies to the troops. And for that, they need supply routes. Okay. So routes and navigations are, you know, very, very core activities in human society. Okay. But more recently, you know, this has come to all of us. And you can probably recognize the next set of examples much quicker. Okay, so probably you know many of you use these navigation apps on smartphones, uh, using which you can essentially find a route to your friend's place or to work or school. Before smartphone apps were popular, we also had dedicated devices, sometimes called GPS devices. So you kind of see a picture of this GPS device. People who go off-road you know, where you may not have cell phone signal as readily available may still use that. So people who do hiking and boating, they still use de dedicated devices. And these devices are also being embedded in many other areas. So for example, many modern cars have a navigation system in their instrument board and people use that, okay? So you probably know that, you know, using these devices, you can very easily find routes and locations, okay? Uh, also another platform is World Wide Web. So beginning mid 90s, you have services such as MapQuest, and in the last decade, you have Google Maps. So you could actually from your desktop computer or tablet, you know, go into World Wide Web and also do routing, okay? Uh, so these things tell us many different things. So first, you know, if you are in a new place and you just want to see what's around you, they can display a map around the current location, and they can also compute um, you know, distance, they can uh, find you routes to a destination and so on, okay? So navigation systems are often built around what we call spatial networks. For example, in these cases, we are looking at road networks, but you could also use public transportation such as train and so on and find routes across those, okay? All right, so let's, uh, let's look at another category of application which is very similar. So broadly, what we saw in navigation system or your smartphone app, are all you know part of a general category of services called location based services okay so within location based services there are many different kinds of questions that can be answered so very first question is where am i okay in outdoor world one can get that through gps but indoor there are other kind of sensors okay if you are um, you know, in tunnel and so on, there may be different sensors that tell you that. But there is a very simple software interface. So using a simple function call, we can find the location. And these locations come in multiple forms. So most of us are used to symbolic place names. So a street address. The computer science building in University of Minnesota may have a street address such as 200 Union Street Southeast, Minneapolis, Minnesota 55455. 
or you may have another symbolic name such as Mall of America uh, and so on. But there is another, a different system which is numerical system. So uh, these symbolic street addresses can be converted to numerical systems such as latitude, longitude. So if you are go using Google Earth uh, web service, you will often see that. And also if you have seen the readings from your GPS, they often start their life in this numerical form, latitude, longitude is an example. So these services also allow you to translate between symbolic forms such as street address and numerical form. And that service is called geocoding. You could also go other way. So if you just have a latitude, longitude, you could ask the symbolic place name for that particular place. Maybe it's a well-known point of interest or a city. Okay. A second category of service is broadly called directory service, wh where you can ask what's around me. So it could be as simple as asking for nearest instance of a service. Let's say you want to locate a doctor or a clinic, you can go and ask for nearest clinic from your current location or a particular location of choice. Okay. You can ask for a restaurant or you know, taxi and so on. In addition, you could also ask a range query. So you can essentially say, well, if I'm willing to walk a mile along the roads or drive a mile, uh, what are the instances of banks within a mile? And you can then choose the ones which is most convenient. Okay. And the last part of this is route, okay, which you have seen in navigation quite a bit. Once you have selected an instance of a service, you can ask, how do I get there? Either walking or driving or through public transportation and so on. Okay. And location-based services as a segment has been growing quite a bit. Besides the consumer application, there are many, many business applications where businesses ask questions of their own interest. And I will show some of those very soon under network analysis. Okay. okay. Now, uh, going beyond the, you know, the current consumer services such as location-based services, you can ask who else in the society cares about spatial networks. And um, the key thing to note, which is what this slide is telling you, is that if you are in any urban area, you know, there are many, many very critical spatial networks of interest. Okay, so this is actually showing you critical infrastructure listed by Department of Homeland Security. And let me point out some of them. Okay, very first one was transportation, which is what we had been talking about so far. But you know, next you can go look at energy. If you think about electricity supply, okay, the electricity is carried through different electricity network from the generation capacity to your home. And again, you know, people have to keep track of that network for many different reasons, one of which is to protect it against adversaries, right? Or if, you know, certain fault happens, if there was a storm and power lines went down, they still need to track them on geography and go repair them, okay? So, you know, there are similar networks for uh, gas. The cooking gas that comes to most houses, again, comes through a network of pipelines. Oil is transported often through pipelines. Another network is water. Okay, in most urban areas, the water is piped, right? So there is a central place where water tank or water is located, and then it comes through pipes to all homes. Uh, even broader, the, you know, there are river networks and so on. So this water flows along different networks that people have to monitor. Uh, one last example, which many of us relate to, is communication. We all use internet, which is another kind of spatial network. In past, people were not paying attention to the locations of these switches. But now there is a lot more awareness of that. And uh, particularly for cell phone, which can move around if you want to tap internet, then you know, your internet companies have to keep track of where it is and route things properly and geography plays a role and so on. So essentially, if you are in an urban setting, there are lots and lots of these spatial networks which are of interest and people you know, use them in different ways, ask different questions. Okay. All right. So you know, um, so there are many societal applications. Now, the big question is, you know, do we already know enough? You know, we had a whole week on spatial querying, and we saw lots of spatial, you know, data types and different kind of querying in SQL. And the big question is, you know, does that already cover all this spatial network? Do we really need to spend another week learning new computational ideas here? Okay. So this slide is essentially telling you that what we learned so far is not adequate. Okay. So first, you remember, you know, we learned OGIS simple feature types, which provided us points, line strings, polygons. So key thing to notice is that those data types model geometry. They do not model street network very well, where you need slightly different data types, you know, it's the mathematical model of graphs. Okay, if you want to compute shortest path, then you need those operators and a new data type called graphs, which are missing. Okay. Same way in SQL, you know, we learned joins and many different things. 
but you have to realize that shortest paths cannot easily be expressed using these joins. Okay? They belong to a special category of operations called transitive closure. And there is a well-known theoretical result that your basic relational algebra or basic SQL cannot express transitive closure such as shortest path. And I will show you many other examples of that on the next slide. Now, uh, there is some good news in SQL realm. Starting SQL 3, recursion was added, which can allow you to express some of these queries. Uh, of course, the performance is still something people are working on, but you can express some of these queries there. Okay. So, let's go down and look at these network analysis queries. And this is now giving you the business side of spatial network, what many businesses do with this. Okay. Uh, so, one part, you know, the first thing businesses do is very similar to what consumers do, which is routing. Okay. So, oftentimes, you know, let's say, you know, a business has to ship some item from a factory to a warehouse and they want the shortest path for that. Okay. So, that is very simple. So, they just want to know how to get some items from factory to a warehouse. But usually, their queries are a little bit more complex, which some of us might have experienced that, you know, they may not have one destination, they have multiple destinations. Okay. So, these routes get a little more combinatorially interesting because you may also have to choose the order of destination. So, again, try to imagine, you know, you may have a warehouse, a store like Sears or Walmart, where many people came and they ordered some appliances like washers or dryers, right? And next, in you know, a morning, the drivers basically get a collection of five or six of these deliveries, and they have to go and deliver that within a couple of hours. So it's important to know in which order these should be delivered and what route. Okay? So this is a very typical query. Uh, another query is in terms of allocation. So many businesses has many, many stores, right? If you think about a post office, it has many different locations, right? And then they have many customers. So a big question for them is to allocate customers to service centers. Okay? And uh, in you know, reverse of this is to designate service areas for each service center. Okay? And finally, there is a third question called site selection. So let's say they wanted to add a new service center because customers have now grown in a certain area. Then you know, they want to essentially ask which are the best locations so that you might minimize distance to the new customers, the sum of that or you might minimize some other things. Okay? Now again, you know, this list of queries, they all belong to this graph-based questions and they, almost all of them include transitive closure or recursion. So expressing these using simple join, select and project, what we learned in spatial querying before is not possible. So we need to learn new things. So as we go along in this chapter, we'll learn about graph data types and the algorithms and how we handle these kind of queries. Okay? So again, to sum up, you know, we talked about spatial networks, their societal importance, who uses them, and we saw consumer applications, business application, government application. And we also discussed the limitations of spatial querying in supporting such questions. And as the chapter goes by, we'll come and learn new things to represent these queries. Thank you, and I look forward to seeing you in the next segment.